How's it going everyone? Jesus64 here coming at you right before the video starts. Just to remind you that memberships are now live on my channel. If you become a member today, you get access to an exclusive Discord. And you get access to some videos up to two whole days early. If you like it, why not consider subscribing? I'd appreciate it. That being said, hope you enjoy the video. How's it going, everybody? Jesus 64 here, coming at you with another episode of Break My Build. Today, we're playing one of my favorite decks of all time, Dragon Maid. Let's get into it. So, starting off the deck, Dragon Maid in its entirety is almost, you could call it almost like a modern version of Gladiator Beast. A lot of monsters tagging in and out during the battle phase and at the end of battle phase. And when they're summoned off of another uh, special summon or normal summon, usually by the effect of another Dragon Maid, they're effect procs. <clears throat> but we also have a small Red Eyes engine in the deck to help us get to some of our more powerful cards. So, as you may notice, I am playing 42 cards. I tend to like to have my decks on the 45 range area. I'll be honest, 40 cards is nice, but when you need that extra good stuff in there, it's okay to go over. So, starting off, we have three Black Metal Dragon. Black Metal Dragon is a very easy normal summon starter for us. Because Black Metal very easily can be linked off using some of our Link 1s to go into Red Eyes Darkness Metal. Then using our Link to get into Red Eyes, and then Red Eyes can get us going with some of our other Dragon Maids that we can hopefully get into the graveyard at that point. Maxi, Ash Blossom, Master Dual Attacks. We're only playing two Max C though, because I find it more better off. The deck only has two instead of three. You can easily bump it up to three if you wish. Nurse Dragon Maid, we're only playing one of. Nurse is part of the essential core of Dragon Maids. We're not playing all of them, but we're playing most. But we're only playing one Nurse, because Nurse is just the monster reborn of the deck. She is a good extender, but if she has nothing to start with, she is a dead card in the hand. Now, next is Kitchen Dragon Maid. Kitchen Dragon Maid adds one Dragon Maid monster to our deck, from our, our from our deck to our hand, and then adds, we have to send one card to the graveyard. It is uh, decent. It's not the best, but it helps us get Dragon Maids into the graveyard for rotation with Nurse, and if we send a bigger Dragon Maid, such as one of the level 8s or the level 7s, it does turn online the battle effect of our smaller Dragon Maids. Parlor Dragon Maid is a very easy way for us to put more big dragons in the graveyard or put a small dragon in the graveyard for Nurse. Additionally, it also can add Dragon Maid Changeover, which we can then add back to the hand with Changeover's effect. Chamber Dragon Maid is the quintessential most important card of the deck. It is always, if you're going to change the ratios or anything, you always must have Chamber at 3, because Chamber can search any Dragon Maid spell or trap card. She can search your Fusion, or she can search one of the more important traps, or even Hospitality in rare instances. Chamber is just a vital point of the deck, and her only downside is once she tags out for battle, you are not going to be able to tag her back in very easily, just simply due to her effect and the effect of the other big Dragon Maids. Now, as for the big Dragon Maids, we are only going to play a very limited amount of them. We're only playing four. And that's because you really don't need that many of them, because you will not have them on the field very often. We are playing one Ernest and one Lopar. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're playing one Ernest and two Tink Hank and one Lopar. My apologies. Brain shut off there for a second. Lop uh, Ernest is a very important one for the deck. She is the one that we need in case Nurse is on the field because she's the only one that can be summoned off of level 7. She is our level 7 target for Nurse, and on top of that, she can also go into Chamber. Additionally, Ernest does have the quick effect of allowing us a special summon one additional Dragon Maid by discarding her into the graveyard. A lot of the bigger ones, you'll notice, have battle effects or card effects that discard them to get them in the graveyard because the little ones can summon the big ones back. Tinkek is, I think, a very easy battle trick that a lot of people sleep on. That's why I include her at two, actually. You can discard this card 
as a quick effect to give one monster you control 2,000 extra attack. It is very easily, more often than not, some of your big Dragon Maids, or your boss monster Dragon Maid, just isn't big enough at times because someone so and so overload Savage or something. This gives them a little extra protection by boosting their attack power, making it much harder to get over that monster. Lopar is another level 8 option, that's why we are playing her. But on top of that, if we discard this card from our hand, we can target one monster on the field and negate its effects for the turn. If your opponent's main source of negation is from a monster effect on field, we can use Lopar to either bait it out or shut it off. Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon is a wonderful extender. Very easy to get off going to the races with Black Metal Dragon. You can summon any dragon monster from your hand or graveyard, and simply all we have to do is banish any dragon monster to summon him for free. A lot of the time, what you're going to do is use Black Metal Dragon, go into, say, Striker or Guard Dragon Pisty, banish Pisty or uh, Black Metal, or uh, Black, yeah, yeah, Black Metal or Striker, go into Darkness Metal. Now you have two monsters on the field, or if uh, Black Metal gets banish for some reason or something happens to it from a, like a Shadal matchup we can banish the one on field and still get metal online on to the spells and traps hospitality is one that lets you special summon a dragon made monster from your hand or graveyard in specification and then send a one dragon with the same attribute from your deck to the graveyard this is a decent way to get your big dragons into rotation or even just get a big dragon on the field if you're in a bit of a pinch because sometimes you draw into them and don't have any way to summon. Hospitality at least get them online for us to get parlor, kitchen, chamber, and the graveyard for later use. Dragon Maid Changeover is our fusion spell of the deck. It allows us to go into our boss master, Xiao, and house. More often than not, you're going to go into Xiao because she's in the gate, but house is there as a necessity just in case you can't go into her. Lightning Storm. Playing two of it because... It is a good going second tool that helps get rid of the gates on the field or just as a good board clear in general if your opponent has to react to this basically and it makes it so you can get into your place much easier similarly triple tactics talent lets you draw deeper into your deck we're playing pot of prosperity I would play three of this but I think it's better off at two instead so we can have triple tactics in deck triple pot just banishes too many cards from the extra deck when you just need some of your monsters in rotation from the extra deck. Your deck doesn't rely heavily on extra deck, but it is nice to have some of those big bunguses online not banished away to never be used. Paleozoic Dinomicious, another great option to get our big dragon maids or our smaller dragon maids into the graveyard in rotation, and also is a negate. And on top of that, Paleozoic Dynamicious has the wonderful effect of being a banish and not a destroy. It gets around a lot of those monsters that have a lot of destruction effects protection, but don't have necessarily the protection to get around a banish. Dragon Maid Tidying and, by extension, Dragon Maid Downtime are our searches off of Chamber. Tidying is the, your usual go-to, but I'm only playing two of it because I don't think you need three of it. I'm being completely honest there. I think it is fine at two. It is target one dragon monster you control and one card your opponent controls or in their graveyard. Turn them to the hand. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Special summon one dragon monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position. First turn during the end phase. You only use each effect once per turn. Yeah. And you can use one effect once per turn. My apologies. A lot of the time, tidying is a pseudo negate. Uh, I use this a lot in the Shadal matchup, in particular. If your opponent summons a big bungus Shadal, and you don't have, say, Paleozoic Dine Mishus online or Ice Dragon's Prison, tidying is an additional way to get rid of Construct or those other really annoying assholes that stick around. Additionally, Downtime is a continuous spell that will stick around that you can activate by targeting specifically Dragon Maid monsters, not just Dragons, but you can return a card to the hand and add a Dragon Maid card to your deck to your hand, or you can return a spell to trap your opponent controls to the hand. It's a decent option to have some of your dragon maids avoid. It also gives you an additional search if needed. And it is also a pseudo 
trap negation if you activate it at the end step of your opponent's turn after they just set a spell or trap card and bounce that back to their hand. Ice Dragon's Prison. Admittedly, you can replace this with like Stolen Strike or something, but I prefer Ice Dragon's Prison just a little more because a lot more often banishment is just so good. It does require your opponent to have a monster in the graveyard, but a lot of the time their combo starters usually send something to the graveyard that we can snatch with prison and then banish both monsters to really negate their whole board. Solemn Judgment admittedly is a bit of a questionable choice, but it is just an Omni negate that is just so important uh, to helping shut down your opponent that I think it's just worthwhile to have two of them in the deck. I would be running three, but uh, <laughs> Master Rule costing so much with these URs got me on my knees. And additionally, I also don't think you need two or three. A lot of the reason a lot of my UR cards and SR cards are at two or even one is because I think you do not need three because you do not always want the card, but I do think they are a worthwhile addition in the deck overall. Now, onto the extra deck. We are playing three house and two Xiao. We are playing th two Xiao and three house because two uh, Xiao is going to be summoned more often and Xiao can bounce herself more often into house. When she negates something, she goes back into her house form and is kind of back in the extra deck where you can just summon her again. Whereas house, more often than not, if she gets gone, she's in the graveyard. So it's, in my opinion, better to have two Xiao just in case something happens to one, and three house because your house is going to be reaching the graveyard more often than your Xiao will. Two dra Dragon Pisty, one Striker. Dragon and Pisty and Striker are here solely for the fact they are Link ones that can go into Black Metal. Sole reason. You are almost never going to use Guard Dragon Pisty's effect, with very rare exception in like two instances if you have Boral Sword on the field. But that's just kind of a win more option then. Striker Dragon is there as a pseudo Link 1 that is easy for dragons to use, and that's the only reason it is here. Heretic Seal of the Heaven. I would recommend probably playing two of this, but again, Master Rule, URs, hurt my wallet. Uh, Heretic Seal of the Heaven has a wonderful effect that it can, if summoned, can be used to tribute itself from your uh, hand or field. Uh, not just itself, but any monster. And then return one face-up card on the field to the hand. If this card is tributed, you can then special summon a dragon from your hand or deck. This is a decent way to negate and is also a pseudo-extender on your opponent's turn. By turning it into tributing itself, bouncing one of your opponent's cards, it then can bring out one of your smaller dragon maids. A lot of time at that point, you probably want Nurse and combo off. Nightmare Cerberus, Nightmare Phoenix decent ways to get rid of something that's just a little too needy, a little too niche for some of your other negates to get out of the way. Really simple there. Transcode Talker is a questionable choice, I will admit. But it is just a decent level 3 and a lot of the times it is good to have for access code lines. Do I play it very often? No. But is it in there enough that I like having it? Yes. Borosow Dragon and Access Code are just your OTK enablers. Really just to swing at the fences to surprise your opponent out of nowhere. Borosword is a little easier in this deck, but Access Code does come online with Transcode in the deck. You usually just have to go into Transcode first, then go into Access Code. And that's the deck. I'm going to go ahead and show you the games. So the first game we are showing off here is versus Magical Musketeer. Magical Musketeer is a really interesting deck, and I don't think it gets a lot of representation, probably because it's a little just subpar power. Our opening hand's not great, but we're also going second. So we really just have to hope this Ash can do a lot. And then they only summon Starfire and Pass. So better for us. We get the Ernest here, which is interesting. We're going to go into Parlor first, Pitch Changeover, Changeover Effect, Bouncing Parlor back to hand going to use changeover to get into our Xiao. Xiao will then be offline to summon us some more dragon maids on our opponent's standby phase and also just be our big fungus. And we're going to set three. They're going to activate Starfire because we misplayed because I didn't read the card. 
But thankfully we have the ash to negate it. It was a misplay on my part though, so I should be a little more careful of that. So we're gonna set three, beat over the Starfire, and pass. That also turns on our Ice Dragon Prison, but this is where downtime and tidying are gonna come into play here. I'm going to activate the Xiao, summon Chamber, or excuse me, summon Parlor. Parlor is gonna send Lopar, so that way Lopar's battle effect is online. And then we get hit with the Dark Ruler no more. Dark they summon a, uh, a lot of things happen in this chain. A lot of things happen here. So they summon a Magical Musketeer, Kid Brave. Kid Brave allows them to activate uh, Magical Musketeer trap cards from the hand or deck. Or excuse me, from the hand as quick play spells. So, with the, that, we chain the effect of tidying, trying to bounce Kid Brave back to the hand, so that way their whole entire turn is shut off. They activate Desperado, targeting our Xiao. So in response, we activate downtime, bouncing our Xiao back. I think I just, for whatever reason, didn't get the search effect there. I'm not sure why, even though we did bounce. Oh, because the monster didn't go to hand. But that does protect our Xiao from negation, even if we don't get the search. This allows us to go into a wonderful play here. And then we have to make a choice, because we have two great normal summons. But then I remember we have the tidying in graveyard. We'll banish the tidying. Bring out Parlor, activate Parlor's effects in the kitchen, normal summon Black Metal, Black Metal into Striker. Black Metal effect to get Darkness, Darkness effect, targeting Striker to bring out Striker, or bring out Bla Darkness. Oh my goodness. A lot of things. Kitchen's effect, Kitchen send Tinkhek, Tinkhek bounces back. They use Changeover to bring it back to the hand, bouncing Kitchen back to hand. And unfortunately, we will have to use our Darkness Metal here to go into Xiao. Xiao's parlor will bounce back. We'll get low par. Get in for lethal. So this deck is actually really interesting. This is Invoke Shadal Dogmatica. A lot of TCG players I know are groaning at that. And trust me, I am too. I hate this deck. But... It is an interesting match to watch. We get to turn to start. So we're going to, of course, Parlor just loves to stick to our hands. So we're going to get Parlor, send uh, Chamber, bring out Xiao. Xiao effect will activate on our opponent's standby phase, and we're going to set two, once again, Tidying and Ice Dragon. On our opponent's standby phase, we're going to activate Xiao, getting Chamber. Chamber will then add a second Tidying to our hand for follow-up plays on the next turn. Our opponent just sets two and then activates Ecclesia. We don't want that to get on the field because it's going to get annoying. So, I am going to negate that. This may have been a bit of a mistake on my part, but I was just worried for more things. They activate the Shadal Fusion using an Ecclesia and a Hedgehog going into Construct. And that's when I really think I shotgun my negate a little too soon. Thankfully, in response, we can activate Tidying. We're going to bounce Chamber back to our hand, so Construct goes back to the extra deck, and we don't have to deal with it. But they will still get the Send off of Construct, and they will get the Search off of Hedgehog, though. So I'm thinking they don't have much follow-up when they activate Squamata, sending another Fusion, and then the Invoke comes down. Sending Dragon and Beast to go into Winda. I get a little nervous with Winda, but then I, thankfully I remember Winda is a Spellcaster, and wouldn't you know it, all the Shadals are spellcasters. So they chain Hedgehog and Dragon to use for the summon. Our Beast and the Dragon to use for summon. We'll bring out that Dragon to negate and banish both of those monsters. That's when they hit Parlor with Called by the Grave. It's a little annoying, but it's not the end of the world. For a turn, we draw a Pot of Prosperity. We're going to activate it. We're going to send six, and that's when they activate an Ice Dragon's Prison. Ice Dragon's Prison is very unfortunate for us. So we're going to activate Tidying in response, though, as a neat little trick to avoid that. We're going to target the Ernest they targeted with Prison. So Prison doesn't go through, and our house stays perfectly safe. 
off the top, we only really find parlor. And so we take hospitality because I'm thinking uh, we can get a very interesting play using hospitality as a little new trick. But they are going to activate their schism in response and make me nervous as the construct once again drops on the field. They're going to send house, get their search, going to send uh, Neshadal Ariel. Ariel's going to banish three, including our house, which is a pain. We're going to activate change over here to get Xiao back in the field. Unfortunately, Construct effect makes it so we can't attack this turn, but we're going to play around that by activating Hospitality, getting Chamber, and that's when our opponent realizes there is no way for them to win, and the game is ours. Overall, I think this deck has a lot of potential in it. Admittedly, I did used to run a Claw of Hermos package in it, but it's kind of just a win more situation unless you're specifically up against other dragon decks, which <laughs> those aren't often in Master Duel, unless they're blue eyes. But because of that, uh, you cut it from the deck, hence why there's only 14 cards in the extra deck. I think this deck is fine as it is. If you wanted to add that Claw of Heramos package, you could, and it is very situationally good, but very few situations if the game grinds out a little too long. That being said, though, I think this deck is good, but if you want to add more to it and try to break my build, let me know in the comment section down below. I've been your host, Jesus64, and I'll see you all next time. Farewell! <laughs>